Hey there, would you recommend podcast advertising to your clients? Well, you're listening to this, so I'm guessing you would. But it's hard to know which podcasts have the best audience demographic or even number of downloads to make advertising with them a good investment, right? Not anymore. Podchaser Pro is the only one-stop shop for all podcast data and even contacts. You can find stuff like listener counts, demographic and geographic data, and even contact information for thousands of the top podcasts across any topic or industry. You can easily find lookalike podcasts, which helps develop a great media plan or even targeted lists for pitching new guests. Leveraging podcasts is super smart marketing and smart PR, which is why Podchaser Pro is the preferred podcast data provider of the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more at podchaserpro.com slash MPN today. Podchaserpro.com slash MPN. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. If you're a regular listener to Winfluence, and I know you are, you know that podcasting itself is a medium I consider a big part of our territory here in the influence marketing space. While you may think of influencers as primarily social media stars with lots of followers like Instagrammers and TikTokers, podcasters are also social media content creators, and many of them have big audiences too. So, when we talk influence marketing, we have to talk about podcasts. Trevor Oldham latched onto the podcast wave a few years ago with not just his own, but freelancing to help people who wanted to do it, but didn't have all the experience and technical skill to make it happen. Then he stumbled upon a gap in the marketplace that has turned out to be a lucrative business for him. Trevor heads a company called Podcasting U. Its main focus is to get its clients booked to be guests on podcasts. Think of it as a PR firm for those who want to get interviewed on this red-hot medium. So instead of starting a podcast, you can just position yourself or someone in your company's leadership to be a great podcast guest and earn that media versus paying for it. I caught up with Trevor to chat about what he sees in the podcast marketplace for brands and influencers themselves. He actually has a surprising answer to whether or not social media influencers should leverage podcasts to build their followings. The clever thing about Trevor being on Winfluence, his team pitched him to me as they would a client. And the way they did it, well, it it obviously worked. We talked about that too. Some good tips on how to leverage podcasts as an influence channel for your business or brand and some salient ideas for you influencers are on today's show. Real quickly though, let's thank our presenting sponsor, Tagger. It's a complete influencer marketing software suite that allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers execute campaigns, and measure success. But instead of me telling you more about it, we want Tagger's actual customers to tell you how they use the platform. Here's a little bit of my recent conversation with TJ Ferreira, the co-founder of Bub's Naturals, a health supplements company, about how he uses Tagger. Think back to life before you were using Tagger. What, what's the biggest pain point that it solved for you? Uh, a litany of Excel sheets and explaining. Um, for us, there's a lot of uh, analysis paralysis in the company, um, a lot of justification and second guessing on kind of direction that we want to go. Is this the right area? Is it going to be good ROAS? Is it going to be a good look for the brand? Is it going to be good engagement? What are the end of goals? And sometimes, you know, that decision, which could be a snapshot, takes three, four, five days. Plus, you're looking at data from multiple sources and you have humans entering that data, which Regardless of how good they are, it's prone to error. Somebody can fat finger, forget a zero, forget a comma, a decimal point, what have you. Um, this takes that humanness out of the, the data collections process and it really just streamlines that that back end decision making that could have been analysis paralysis and just stamps it and says, hey, OK, make the decision now. Is this good? You have as much data as you're going to get. So keep it moving. Thanks to TJ and to Bubs Naturals for sharing their use of Tagger. To learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you, just visit jason.online slash Tagger today. That's jason.online 
slash tagger. My Influence Marketing Podcast recommendation this week is the Analytica Podcast. Not only does the UK-based B2B influencer marketing company pop out a digest of industry news every so often, but CEO Tim Williams welcomes guests from throughout the industry to talk about the strategies and tactics that make many brands, especially B2B businesses, successful in the world of influencer marketing. To subscribe, just search for Analytica wherever you get your podcasts. That's Analytica, O-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-A, Analytica. Let's get more on the power of influence marketing through podcasts. Trevor Oldham of Podcasting You is next on Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might like as well. I'm Nick Westergaard, host of the On Brand Podcast. Each week I interview marketing thought leaders or those working for innovative brands like Adobe, Ben & Jerry's, HBO, Salesforce, and Whole Foods. You'll learn how to tell stronger stories and build better brands. Just visit onbrandpodcast.com or search for On Brand with Nick Westergaard wherever you like to listen. Trevor, you obviously saw a need somewhat early on in this latest surge and in interest in podcasting. Take me back to the idea to start podcasting for you. What was what was it that triggered the idea to start a company to help people get booked on podcasts? Yeah, Jason, that's an excellent question. And, and looking back in time, I think it really starts back probably about 2015. And at that time, I had been running another company separate to the company that I had run been running now. And really with that company, we had grown a small social media following. We were doing fairly well. But I realized that at any point in time, let's say that we put out an Instagram post and Instagram didn't like it and violated community guidelines and our account could get shut down. That sort of thing, you know, that was happening, you know, six years ago. And I realized that I wanted to be able to go out there and, and create another medium. And with that said, I started a podcast on my own. I saw a ton of value in it. And I was interviewing entrepreneurs, and just these very successful people. And really fast forwarding two years through that story, I was no longer running that company with a partner. And I said it wasn't a great fit for what I was looking to do at that point in time in my life. And what I ended up doing was freelancing some of the skills that I had learned. And some of the skills I had learned came mainly through podcasting, which consisted of booking guests for my own show, which consisted of editing, writing show notes, everything that goes into running a podcast. So I started off doing that freelancing for about six months. And I realized that over the course of those six months, I developed a good client list of folks that wanted to get specifically promoted by going on other people's podcasts. And I found that that market was very small and there's less competition where when it came to the podcast editing, there might be 20 or 30 people applying for that one specific freelance job where when it came to booking people on other people's podcasts, it was a very small, there might be two, three, four, or even, you know, as small as five of us. And I really just started to run with that, you know, did that for about a year. And I realized that, wow, this has a ton of potential, you know, and then really from there on out, just added a team of employees, or I guess I should say contractors for legal reasons, have a team of contractors um, helping me out and, and just really just grew it from there. And especially since the pandemic, you know, that really accelerated the business back in March of 20, 2020. Now I had to get the year right. It's been quite a while, but really accelerated the business, especially with folks that had speaking engagements. And all of a sudden the mm -hmm. speaking engagements are gone and they're looking for another medium. So it's it's been, you know, probably a six year journey to really seeing the value of podcasting. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously PR firms, uh, which is normally, you know, from a traditional perspective, anyway, from a media relations perspective, PR firms are the ones who would typically book somebody for interviews. They've been around for a century or so. Was the need uh, that you saw created more by PR professionals being slow on the uptake or, uh, you know, or is there something about connecting with podcasters that's just inherently different? I would say it was probably coming through the the PR agencies just being slow to adapt to the times because you could think about it, you know, for the longest time it was print, you know, it was magazines, it was newspapers, and then, you know, pretty much with television coming on, then it was, you know, being on news channels, getting interviewed on that sort of thing. And then podcasting has really only taken off, you know, within, I'd say even less than 10 years ago. So I think that they were slow to adapt to it, which was nice for myself because I know when I started, you know, there's probably... I think a handful of companies like myself, and then now there's a ton more of us that have come out, um, you know, that have come out even in the last year or two. So from that standpoint, 
I could see how now that the PR agencies are starting to add that on to their demographic, I think it's because clients are probably asking them to do that and they never had to do that in the past. So I think from that standpoint, I was sort of an early adopter into the podcasting space, you know, not as early as as some, but that sort of gave me that advantage where some of these maybe larger agencies, it was a little bit harder for them to adapt to it. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm probably a bad example to use here, but to, uh, in all transparency, I to promote Winfluence the book, uh, I reached out to over 250 podcasts myself. Now I'm a PR guy by trade and an influencer marketing pro in my kind of day-to-day work. So I know how to do this. I pitched them all individually with custom ideas on what we could talk about and that related to the book topic and such. I'm actually still doing it. I haven't gotten to all of them because it's, I mean, hell, I've been doing it for seven months now and I still haven't gotten all 250. Um, but would someone like me be a good candidate for, uh, you know, podcasting you, or are you there to serve the folks who maybe don't have the time or knowledge to be able to handle this? Yep. That's exactly, as you said, so that's really our bread and butter is coming into someone, you know, unlike yourself who comes to us and they just don't necessarily have that, you know, either one, it comes to time or two, they just don't have, they don't even know where the first place to start to write a podcast pitch. They don't know how to find the contacts, that sort of thing. That's like our ideal client or adjacent someone like yourself that has that PR experience, you know how to write a pitch. I'm sure you know how to find out the contact information. It really wouldn't be worth your time unless you wanted to hire our company to save you a little bit of time on that. And and that's something to assess when anyone's going out there and potentially wanting to do it themselves or hire a company like ourselves. You know, it really just goes back to, do you have the skills? Do you have the knowledge? And also, do you have the time to do it? Yeah. I'm I'm curious too, how sophisticated most of your clients are about all this. I mean, if, if you're going to spend money to have somebody book you on podcasts, and again, I'm a bad example because I do this for a living, but, uh, uh, but, but I'm going to want to, you know, pick the podcast. I'm going to want to ask for analytics on the back end and, you know, know what of each that I'm getting. Are your clients demanding that type of validation yet? Or, or are you offering it to them to kind of speed up on what, get them up to speed on what they get out of it all? I'm, I'm just curious how sophisticated they are in knowing what they get out of the podcast experience. Yeah, most certainly. And I would say really probably over the last year and a half, I can say back when I launched the company back in 2017, people just wanted to get booked on podcasts and they're just happy to do so. You know, now, you know, again, probably about a year and a half ago, people are asking for those numbers, you know, pretty much on every sales call, every potential client, you know, probably nine times out of 10 is saying, how large are these audiences? I don't want to make, I want to make sure I'm not wasting my time. Those sort of questions are definitely coming through. And I think it's because people are starting themselves are starting to listen to podcasts and they can tell the difference between a good podcast and, you know, a podcast that's, you know, maybe not as great. And they don't want to go on those podcasts that are not as great, especially if they're (laughs) spending, you know, a good amount of money to do that. So those questions have definitely come through, you know, again, pretty much in the last year and a half. And I can imagine in the future, it's only going to continue on. That's true. All right. Let's look at podcasts from the brand angle. Businesses want to promote their thing. They listen to this show because they know we're going to talk about how they can get third party influencers to talk about their thing. Are podcasters just a type of influencer that you approach differently or would you advise them to treat the two you know, influencers versus podcasters separately? I would probably advise I would probably treat them differently, you know, looking at them. I think they're, you know, you do get the podcasters that you could consider influencers that might be like a John Lee Dumas, who is, you know, Joe Rogan, you know, those folks that are more in the pioneering of the podcast space, you know, their shows have probably been around, you know, 10, 10 plus years or so. I would look at those folks and classify them as influencers. But I would say outside of that, you know, there are tons and tons of great podcasts out there where the only the only thing that that person does is podcasts and they might not have a, you know, a large Instagram following, but they're very good at what they do. Whereas when I picture influencer, I'm picturing someone that has a wide, you know, they have books, they have a large Instagram following. People look to them, you know, a lot where I think, there is that sort of, you know, there might be that little gray area again, like the Joe Rogan or, or John Lee Dumas, but I think that I typically like to treat the two of them separately. Yeah. All right. Now let's look at it from an influencer's perspective. If I'm an influencer trying to build my brand, is promoting myself to be a guest on podcasts a good use of my time or no? I would say no. And we actually had this example come through probably about three years ago, we, we got a referral client. She was actually a former co-host of Dancing with the Stars and she wanted to grow her Instagram following. And I thought that it would be easy getting her booked on podcasts. And you know, from those podcasts, people would hear her and they would go check her out on Instagram and that they would follow her. Unfortunately, those were the test results that we had with her. And 
we found that it just wasn't a good medium to grow your Instagram following or to grow your Facebook following or, or your Twitter following. That's just sort of the some of the results that we found. You know, it might be different now, but we, anytime we're talking to, a, say, a potential client and they say, I want to go on podcasts to grow my social media following, we find more often than not, it's not going to be a good return on your investment. Whereas if you have like a book, you have a course, you have a coaching program, consulting, those sort of things, that's where you're going to benefit from going on podcasts when it comes to just growing the social media following. Again, it just goes back to that one individual. And, and we thought she was a really good, you know, case study, especially being someone that's, you know, basically a celebrity that's been on television and she still couldn't necessarily grow her Instagram following, you know, that rapidly through podcasts is why we covered of hold back on people or don't necessarily want to work or I don't necessarily want to work, but we can't typically help out those folks. Gotcha. Well, and it's, it's curious. I would love to maybe even dive into exploring why that is. And I, my first thought that comes to my mind, see if this gels with you. If I'm listening to a podcast more often than not, at least for me, I'm in my car, you know, or I'm, I'm driving somewhere or I'm doing something hands-free, like I'm, you know, doing the dishes or something around the house where I'm not sitting on my phone necessarily. And so it's easy to listen to a podcast and you hear someone, well, I'm, you know, Jason Falls on Instagram. And so I can jump over to Instagram real quick while still listening to the podcast and follow that person. But I think a lot of podcast listeners are not necessarily locked into their device. They put it on as an audio experience while they're doing other things. That could be at least one reason, if not the main reason, I think why that might happen. That that gel? Yeah, that definitely gels. And, and I know even, you know, like you mentioned, speaking from my own personal experience, like with them, when I'm at the gym, when I'm driving in the car, I'll have podcasts on, but I'm sort of, they're sort of almost like a background noise at times Yeah. where I think that, you know, it might fall on deaf ears. And I think too, a lot of times, you know, Jason, I'm coming on to your show, you'll give me an opportunity, you know, more often than not to promote, you know, myself. And that typically comes towards the end of the interviews. And I think as it starts to get toward the end of the interview, people sort of, you know, fall off and, you know, they've heard the majority of it. They can tell it's getting towards the end and then they just click off it and that's the end of it. And they don't hear, you know, your Instagram or your Twitter, or your Facebook and that sort of thing. So I think that might play a little bit of an aspect into it too. Interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way, but I, I think that's probably pretty valid. Well, I, I will tell you this, your team uh, pitched you to be on this podcast and I really appreciated the outreach. It was relevant, very custom to my show, not just a blanket asked. And I think Margie, I believe it was on your team, actually even preemptively went and reviewed the podcast with five stars to give me a little, you know, a little something hoping I would, uh, you know, respond in return. So I'm guessing all those traits are, are good pieces of, of advice for others trying to do this, right? Oh, most certainly. You know, the best, you know, best piece of advice to give anyone, you know, like even like yourself, Jason, you know, make sure it's customized to every single person that you reach out to. And then if you can include a five star review on iTunes for each person. And the reasoning behind that is sort of podcast reviews are sometimes seen as the gold standard. And podcasting, you know, it's very nice to get them. People like to receive them. You know, it makes podcasts look nice, you know, that sort of thing. So I think hosts always like to receive them. So just by going out of your way and doing that, it's going to allow you to stand out. And I can tell you from experience back when I started the company in 2017, we weren't doing things like customizing or, you know, leaving reviews. It was pretty much a blanket pitch that we would send out to every podcast host. And the conversion rates back then, you know, four years ago were like 80% super high. Now, if you try to do that today, you, you know, you'd be lucky if you pitch, you know, 50 shows, you'd be lucky if you heard back from two or three of them. So just the, the industry that has changed, the competition has changed and it's harder. And because of that, you have to sort of adapt to the, adapt to the times. Well, I can also tell you that from the podcaster's perspective, flattery is the best form of flattery. So that five-star review works really well for, for getting our attention. So that's uh, good on you. Now, real quickly, though, before we go, I understand you're not just a, a booking service for those wishing to be guests, but uh, you can also help podcasters by going the other way and being a booker. But you also have some help with people who want a podcast, right? Give me a sense of all the things podcasting you has to offer. Yeah, most certainly. So pretty much did the company for three years and our only bread and butter was getting, you know, let's say myself booked on other people's podcasts and really back starting probably in the spring, people were coming to us. A couple of companies were saying, hey, can you book guests for my podcast? And these were some Fortune 5 not 500, for Fortune 5,000 companies or Inc. 5,000 companies. I think that's what it was. They were coming to us and their marketing team, they just didn't have the, the bandwidth to do it. They didn't want their employees doing it. So they would outsource it to our company. So after about two or three of those companies reached out to us, I figured why not just continue to do it and add on as a service. So we do help people get booked. We do help people that have a podcast and they want guests. We help secure guests for your show. 
and then going and then even following down that path the folks that had their podcast that we were booking guests on they realized they didn't necessarily know how to edit that podcast that expanded to the that expanded to that other service you know it's not something we you know i actively promote it's more or less a client comes to us we have it on our website and they want to help editing their podcast we you know we'll help them do that we'll take care of that process for them but you know like i said bread and butter is getting yourself or other people booked on other people's podcasts very nice Awesome, Trevor. Well, where can people find you on the interwebs if they want to know more? Yeah, most certainly. They can check out the website, Podcasting You. That's podcastingyou.com. Or if you want to connect with me, you can find me on LinkedIn under my name, Trevor Oldham, or on Instagram as well, just at Trevor Oldham as well. Trevor, thanks so much for the time and thoughts today. I'm a huge fan of uh, positioning podcasts as an outlet for influence efforts. So I'm glad you're pushing that same thinking. Appreciate you being here today, man. Thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on MPN.